my thing. So people have collected this child protection policy document and have signed original copy collected or received by me. And they have taken this document and threw it somewhere, maybe in their files or in their drawer somewhere. And this policy is lying there and they have not opened it, they've not read it. And they have signed the original copy collected by me. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Noya here again. So today's video is another video of something that I just saw online and I thought I should share with you. It's a news and it concerns teachers and teaching, it concerns parents and it concerns the society. And that's why I really wanted to just talk about this. But before that, let's just um, read the news together. Lagos pupil vomits and dies after he was allegedly flogged by his teacher over homework. Emmanuel Amidu died at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital soon later. The victim's father, Akiola Amidu, claimed that a 12 year old GSS2 student was flogged by a teacher at school for not completing his own work on Thursday, May 12, 2022. He said his son started vomiting shortly after the beating and was rushed to a hospital where he gave up the ghost on Friday, May 13, 2022. The father alleged that the school management was covering up his son's death and protecting the mathematics teacher, one Stephen, who flogged Emmanuel and the rest of the class for failing to do their homework punch reports so you have seen that so this 12 year old boy went to school and he didn't do his math assignment and he was not the only child that was flogged other children were flogged as well so that's what the story says but then the father of the boy is claiming that the child was flogged by the teacher and that was why the child passed that was why the child died so the father is saying that the boy was not sick nothing happened to him he went to school on this particular day he got flogged he started vomiting after a while and then he was taken to the hospital long and short of the story the day after he was flogged the boy passed now this is why i'm making this video you know that it's possible that the cane may not have been the reason or the flogging may not have been the reason why that this child passed but the flogging is associated to or is assisted with why this boy passed on and this is what i have been saying every time teachers and i keep saying it what you do can make or ma what you do can put you in trouble or take you out of trouble the child may be asymptomatic in other words he may have been ill and he may not have shown symptoms he may have been sick but may not have shown symptoms there are some children like that children are mostly like that especially when they're ill they can have certain sicknesses and they may even pass it on to somebody else especially if it's a contagious disease or sickness and they may not even show sign until they're tested i think that happened majorly during covid some children had covid passed it on to their parents or other adults around them this adult fell sick they tested them and found out that they had covid and then they decided to test the children and found out that this student had covid but they didn't show any sign or any symptoms so i'm not saying that that's the reason why this boy passed well i cannot tell it would take an autopsy or a professional in the field of medicine to help us look into this and then to look into this to be able to come up with the reason why this boy actually passed now back to the story of the teacher that flogged now imagine that you didn't flog anybody in that class that day and this boy still died or this boy passed on who would have claimed anything who would have alleged anything in fact you only would not have been in the news now because you did what you were not supposed to do i'm coming and where i'm going by what you were not supposed to do in the child safeguarding and child policy flogging is not allowed in fact, I read in an article recently that even in public school in Lagos State now, they're saying that flogging is not allowed. So you're not allowed or permitted to flog a child. So if you have gone against this safeguarding policy or this policy that has to do with protecting children and you have gone ahead to hit a child or to flog a child, see what you've cost yourself. And this is not the first time they're talking about flogging. A lot of people have come up to say, ah, uh, flogging is not a problem. This was how we were raised. They flogged us when we were growing up there. Nobody's talking about, talking about how you were growing up. People are talking about the organization where you work and the professionalism in the organization where you work. Flogging is not a lot. Flogging is not something that you should do. And we all know that to a very large extent, the reason why you flog children is because you do not have any other thing to do or you do not know what else to do. That was why you used flogging as a means or as a measure. It has been tested and it has been proven that this is the reason why a number of people flog or some teachers flog. Now, teachers. I know that even after watching this video, there are still teachers who will flog children in their classroom. I'm not even going into the behavioral aspect of flogging. I'm talking about knowing what to do if a child isn't meeting up to expectation. 
There are some people in this 2022 that still flock children because they do not understand a certain concept. Do you catch it? You ask a child what is one plus one, and the child is like, um, well, uh, four. And you why slap the child? I taught you one plus one yesterday. You're beating a child for not remembering. In other words, if the child was able to remember, the child would have told you the answer without stress. But in this situation, in this case, there's something wrong that a child cannot remember or connect with you what you had taught to him the day before. So why do we do repetitive reinforcement? Why do, do we teach again? Why do we reteach? Why do we remind? That's why I'm saying. There are times when you're trying to help, when you're trying to help a child learn, and you can tell that all that this teacher is doing, waiting for is for this child to fail or make a mistake so that this thing can land on the child's head. The reason why I'm making this video is back to teachers. They say, what you do, hey, can put you in trouble or can take you out of trouble. Now, this teacher woke up this morning and did not know that a child would die or a child would pass on in that school. And he didn't know that what he did could lead to him being rubbed into the issue. The child may not have died from flogging, but the flogging could have triggered the, the death. You never can tell. But now, this is the father's claim. The father is saying categorically that the reason why his son passed was because the son was flogging the teacher. How do you exonerate yourself? How do you take yourself out of this issue? How do you take yourself out? How do you become clean of this issue if you hadn't? How do you become clean? How do you take yourself out of this issue? How are you going to just wash yourself clean? You have to your family members now and wife and children and people related or connected to you or husband. Everybody will now be running helter skelter just to get you out of trouble because the father of the boy has claimed that you killed his son. If they say flogging is no longer allowed, this is the 21st century. Use other means to correct children. Use other means or other methods. Why not for the sake of being a professional? Do what you're supposed to do professionally and just get yourselves out of trouble. I keep saying this thing. Hey, when you pass by the road, I said it in my last video. When you pass by the road and you hear a beggar say, I go by the bar, my jerry, be shouting, amen, oh, amen, oh. Because this one now, you didn't plan it. You had a good intention. Your intention was to ensure that they all did their own way. And your intention was so that they would do their own way. And that was why you flogged. I mean, was it not a good intention you had? See what your good intention had brought you. It's the same thing we're saying every time, every time, every time. Do the right thing. Some people have collected this child protection policy document and have signed original copy collected or received by me. And they have taken this document and threw it somewhere, maybe in their files or in their drawer somewhere. And this policy is lying there and they have not opened it, they've not read it. And they have signed the original copy collected by me. So how do you come up to say, ah, I didn't know that hitting a child was part of, is in that policy. Ah, <laughs> I didn't know. Ah, there's no ignorance in the law. You have collected and you have signed. And you still hit a child. How do you come up clear? And this is what they're saying to you. So parents, talk to the teachers of your children. Talk to the lesson teachers. Talk to your nannies. Talk to people. There are other measures or other means that you can use, especially if it has to be personality. If you're inside your house and as a parent, you do what you want to do with your child, we'll be coming and see you, right? But here, we're talking about outside your house. So this is school. Road. This is an organization. This is not a village market meeting under, under the tree kind of a thing. This is an organization. There are rules in every organization. We have broken one. I just pray this child gets out of this and God helps this family to bear the loss because the child has gone. A human has gone. A soul is departed. God help this family to bear this loss and God help these teachers to hear because after this video, some people will still flow. And God help you to also learn. And that's what I'm saying, teachers. Start taking your hands off things that can put you in trouble. Start staying away from trouble. So let's just continue this conversation in the comment section. I do not want this video to be very long. Just let's continue in the comment section. I just hope that everyone learns something from this video. And if you think it's worth sharing, please share it. And do not forget to hit the subscribe button if you've not done that already. I'll see you in another video. I hope it's a, it's a good video this time around. See you next time. Bye for now.